the Lord had given me this, and I won't, won't be very long because I don't have time to get into it now like I would, but God willing, we'll do it next Sunday. <clears throat> but he was talking to me about the power of agreement. And the power of agreement is releases a force. Now, we heard Constance on the keyboard and Deacon Willie on the bass and CJ on the drums. Now, if they would come in and start tuning their instruments, Deacon Willie be making one sound, Constance making one sound, and it wouldn't sound very good. But when they all begin to play the same thing, it makes a beautiful sound. So agreement means to harmonize as, a, as of a symphony. Take many different sounds and bring them together and harmonize. And they make one beautiful sound. So the power of agreement, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, they all agree. That's why you don't see any chaos in the kingdom. Because they all three agree. Turn to Genesis chapter 11. Got several, but I'm just going to give you this one today. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 11. We're going to read Well, we'll read 1 through 9. Everybody have it. Genesis chapter 11. Begin at verse 1. <clears throat> when you're there, say, I'm there. Amen. We're talking about the power of agreement. Everybody there. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to. Let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men build. And the Lord said, Behold, this, this six is really, really good. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. Now listen to this. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel. Because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Now, this is after the flood of Noah, when God told them to multiply. Look back, just keep your finger there, turn back to chapter 9. And look at verse 1. This is what God told Noah. He said, And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful 
and multiply and replenish the earth. Now, that was God's command. He told them to be fruitful, to multiply, and to replenish the earth. Now, here in the Tower of Babel, they've come up with their own decision. They decided they wanted to stay together, make one city, so they wouldn't be scattered. But God told them to scatter, to fulfill and replenish. Now, he said, behold the pe- six, behold the people is one. See, that's what agreement is. It means to be in one accord. To agree. To settle on the same thing. Say they are, they all have one language. Oh, that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ would have one language. That one language of the kingdom is the language of faith. That's that's the language of the kingdom, is the language of faith. If we would all speak the word of God. He said, and this they begin to do. And listen to this. Now, this is power. Now, you got to understand that these people are not saved. These people are not born again. They don't know God. They don't have a Bible. They don't have a preacher. These are just everyday unsaved folk. But even when unsaved folk come into agreement... You can get some stuff done. See, you can look in the world today, and there are people that are not saved that own these big companies and stuff, but they are in agreement, so it's successful. The key is agreement. Do you see now why the enemy works so hard to get us to be in disagreement? Because if he can get us to disagree, and to get in strife with one another, then we won't get anything done. But he, this, now look what the Lord is saying to a mind that has not been renewed by the word of God. He's talking to people that don't have the Holy Ghost living on the inside of them. He said, now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Well, if unsaved people have the ability to do that, how much more can the people of God that have been cleansed and washed in his blood, that have been gloriously filled with his Holy Spirit, if we would come into agreement, how much more could we get done? Just listen, listen to, he said nothing. (laughs) He said anything that they imagine, anything they come up with in their mind, they're going to be able to do it. Why? Because they're in a. Nothing that Lifeline Ministry covenant to do, and we come in agreement and do it together, nothing will restrain us. The same thing in your house. That's why he wants husband fighting wife and wife fighting husband and children fighting mommy, children fighting daddy because he knows that if he can get disagreement in there, disagreement will restrain you. Look what he did. When when God saw what they had done, he didn't go down and take the tools that they were working with to build this tower. He went down and did what? (laughs) He confused their language. Look at it. See, we make it so, it ain't complicated. He didn't, you know, up here they said, In verse 3, they said they had bricks, they burned them thoroughly, they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. Now, that's all they needed, plus the tools they were using to build this tower. 
Now, look like to me, if I wanted to stop them from building that tower going to heaven, I would have done away with the, with the bricks, and I would have done away with the mortar because they couldn't build. But that wasn't what was making the tower go up. It was the power of agreement. That's why he don't want you to talk to each other. That's why he don't want you to communicate. Because if we ever sit down and reason together, even God said, come to me and let us reason together. <laughs> Woo! There is so much power in agreements. That's why he wants sisters and brothers fighting. You ain't got no business fighting against each other. Because see, when you, when you fight against each other, you invite, you tell Satan, come on in. And you go ahead and you take the comfortable seat. Because you're going to be here a while. But if you want to evict him, start walking in love. He can't stay where love is. But he is right at home where there's strife, disobedience, and rebellion, and sin. It gives him an open door and a warm seat. The power of agreement. If husbands and wives knew the power they had in agreement, why do you think he fights marriage so much? Glory to God. Why he fight families so much? Go to, verse 7, go to, let us go down there and confound their language. Why? That they may not understand one another's speech. A lot of times when we're given our viewpoint, we don't really listen to the other person. We're just giving them time to hush so we can tell them our, our point of view instead of really listening. Now, when he said, let us go down there and confound their land. See, that's, that's, that's smart because that's God. He knew what was holding them together was not the brick and nor the mortar, but their agreement to build the tower. See, they had come into agreement. Oh, my God. How many times... Do we gather together and get in agreement to disobey God? How many times do the church come together and get in agreement? We see it more now than ever before. We want to change God's words. We want to change God's laws. We want to get inclusive. So that means we gather together to get in disagreement, to disobey the word of God. So he said, I know what I need to do. I need to confound or to confuse their language. It's like you would go to lunch with somebody that only speaks Spanish. You don't understand them, and they don't understand you. What agreement is there? None. Because you don't understand what they're saying, and they don't understand what you're saying. That's why we need to fight to stay in agreement. We need to walk in love. We need to be quick to forgive and to let go. We have to, we have to be quick to forgive and to let go. When I read that, I was, and the Holy Spirit showed me that, He said, Look. Babel means confusion. That's the definition of Babel. Babel means confusion. He said they called it Babel. Now they had come up with their own idea how to get to heaven. They were going to build a tower. There's so many people have come up with their own way to be saved. Own way to live holy. What's acceptable, what's not acceptable. <clears throat> There's no agreement. 
I just love seven. They just go down and confound their language, their ability to understand one another. Because if we're working and I need a hammer, and I say, Monica, pass me a hammer, she hand me a screwdriver. No, I want a hammer. Oh, oh, then she hand me a saw. We're not going to get a whole lot done. But if I say, Monica, hand me a hammer, and she understand what I say, she hand me a hammer. He said, Let's, and Satan's been working ever since to confound our language. The language in the kingdom is faith. Faith cometh how? And hearing what? The word of God. So faith is the word of God. A lot of us wonder why we can't get something. Some of us not even in agreement with ourselves. you your own worst enemy. <laughs> ain't the devil, it ain't God. You speak things over yourself. That is not even what God has decreed and declared. I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. How many churches get up and you hear that? We just old sinner saved by grace. No, we're not. I was an old sinner, and I got saved by grace. Now I'm thoroughly washed and clean. Amen. Amen. He confounded their language. How many times do the enemy try to confound our language? We say one thing, but he calls you to hear something else. Sometimes a person may be upset with you. And, you know, you go to him and you say, are you angry at me about something? Did I do something? Um... You know, to upset you. You know what you said. Uh, no. What did I say? Well, you said so and so and so and so. And you'd be like, that's not what I said. But the enemy will cause you to hear something else. There are a lot of times, even from the pulpit, when I'm ministering, the enemy will cause you to hear something else. And instead of it bringing deliverance, it puts you in bondage. Well, then that means you ain't hearing right. Because the gospel doesn't put you in bondage. The gospel sets you free. There's no condemnation. There's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. We have to get in agreement with the word of God. You can't say one thing today and another thing tomorrow. There's no agreement in that. When my granddaughters came up here, we had prayed and came in agreement concerning our family. And I'm not trying to put them on blast or anything like that. And I've not come out of agreement. I've not come out. I don't care what. I don't care if it looked like it's it turned south, north, east, upside down, went another way. It's, no, I'm standing solid on the word of God. That's why I love her just like I loved her the day she stood up here and I joined them together. I love him just like I did the day he stood up there. I love those babies the same as I did. I can't let any of that. Oh, it has caused me to cry some. Oh, yeah. I, I've had to wrestle my flesh down because my flesh kept wanting me to look. Look, but the Bible says see. See, the enemy's trying to get me to look at, oh boy. Listen to what they say. I don't need to hear what they're saying. I need to hear what the Holy Ghost is saying. I got to make sure I stay in agreement with what he said. I wrote it down in my journal. Yesterday morning, I got up and sit on the side of the bed, and I read it again. He said, keep that word before your eyes. I said, you know what, God? You're not a man. You should lie. You told me this is what you're going to do. You told me this would be the final outcome. I still agree. I still agree. When God healed me from cancer, he told me, he said, cancer will never come back in your body again. So every time I go for my mammogram and the enemy try to get me to look, no, I see. Amen. 
Every time it gets time for my mammogram, he said, see, you don't feel a little pain in your breast. They feel a little tender. They're a little sore. You feel that? No, I don't feel nothing. <laughs> ah, I said, God, you told me. You told me. The God that cannot lie, you told me cancer would never, ever come back in my body. And I'm in total agreement with that word. Agreement means to say the same thing. Are you saying what God says about you? Are you saying in the dark what he told you in the light? Or have you allowed circumstances to alter your mouth? And that's what circumstances have come for, to change the words in your mouth. They would have kept building. And from what I can surmise from this, they could, if they'd have kept building and building and building, he said nothing would be restrained. If it wouldn't have been restrained, he would never have had to come in and do intervention. He confused their language. So they had to leave our building because they couldn't understand one another. How many ministries, how many families, how many jobs, how many homes have been destroyed because of a lack of agreement? Because the enemy has come in and confused our language because of past hurts and disappointments. God said, I need you to come into agreement with me this morning. Amos 3 and 3. I said that one, but let, why are you over here in the old? Let's just go to Amos 3 and 3. I know everybody know where it is. Right in front of Obadiah. <laughs> <laughs> Hosea, Joel, Amen. Amos three, verse three. Amos three, verse three. Can two walk together? Except they be agreed. Can two, he's asking, walk together except they be agreed? Come here, Jaden and Bunny Rabbit. I want you all to take hands, hold hands. Now, Jaden. I want you to go over to the right, and Destiny, I want you to go to the left. Go. Come on. Go. Why? Why? There's no agreement. There's no agreement. God say you heal. Your body say you sit. So if both of you go, God say you heal, both of y'all go to the wall on this side where the keyboard is. Both of y'all walk to the keyboard. God say you heal. You just got to come in agreement. You just got to, it's so simple. We make it so hard. Come right, come back here. Okay. God say you heal and your body say you sick. Okay, destiny go toward uh, Sister Sharon, you go toward the keyboard. Will healing manifest? No. Why? No agreement. Thank you. No agreement. Could it be a lot of things that's happening in our life that's not going right because there's no agreement?
What if we would sit down and have family prayer time? Family Bible study time. What if we would all come to the dinner table and eat together, share our day? What did you do today? What happened with you today? Oh, that's, that's June Cleave and Wally Cleave. No, that's the kingdom of God. That's how gangs and stuff get a hold of our children. You know what? We're going to eat together. No phone. My, my two sisters, Jan and Lily, you don't bring no phone to their kitchen table. Mm-mm. They tell you, uh-uh, they just don't even bring the phone. Let's talk. Let's talk. There's, there's so much can be released when you talk. Share. Share what's in your heart. I didn't know that was bothering you, really. Oh, I'm not good. I'm just having such a hard time in math. I'm good in math. You are? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Then you get with me and work with me on math, and then math's no longer a problem. The power of agreement. The power of agreement. It was so powerful that these unsaved people, unsaved, y'all, Didn't have a Bible. Hadn't read this. Can two walk together except they be agreed? But they made up their minds. They made up their minds that they were going to build a tower. And they were getting it done. How much more can the people of God Let's stop pushing our own personal agenda. I'm going to tell y'all something that the Lord, and I'm going to close with this, what the Lord told me, uh, and it just, it, it, it blessed my socks off. I didn't even have socks on. We talked about building a new sanctuary. And I came over here, and I just sat out in the parking lot, and I just talked to the Lord. And I looked at what God has already blessed us with, what he's already given us, and I gave him thanks. And I thank God for Pastor Richard Taylor. I thank God for his leadership and how he showed us and led us to pay these buildings off. When he transitioned, he gave me a debt-free building. You didn't have to be concerned about making payments and all of that. And so I'm careful how I build on what he's left. Because I want to leave it better for who coming behind me. So I'm sitting out there and I said, Lord, I need you to tell me what, what do you want in this new building? How do you want it? And this is three things he told me. He said, when I told Noah to build me an ark, I told him what kind of wood to use. I told him the dimensions. I told him how many floors to put in it, where to put the door, where to put the window. He said, I gave him the exact thing I wanted in that ark, how to build it. He said, when I had Moses to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt, And I had him to build me a tabernacle in the wilderness. And I told him what to put in the outer court and in the inner court and in the most holy place. I told him what colors to use. I told him the dimensions. I told him how to put the tribes around the tabernacle. He said when David wanted to build me a house, I told David he couldn't build me a house Because his hands were bloody. You know, David had had Bathsheba's husband killed. You know, you can be forgiven, but sometimes you can forfeit. You can forfeit your right to leadership, even though you're forgiven. So he told David, no, you're not going to build my house. Solomon is going to build it. 
He said, I told Solomon exactly how to build my temple. The dimensions, what to put in it, and everything. And then he said this to me. He said, you can expect the same from me concerning life. Ah, what triggered that, PJ, was you said we don't even know what kind of church we want. But God's going to give it to us. He's going to give us the dimensions, how many rooms in it, how many, where. And I told God, I said, the one thing that I need to know from you, am I the one to build the house? He said, your hands are clean. Needless to say, I had a Holy Ghost fit. It's nothing like including God in on your plans. Many of the plans in the heart of a man, but only the plans of God will prevail. So we need to come into agreement with what God has already said about us regardless of your present circumstances because it's going to be exactly like he said verse 7 go to let us go down there and confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech I decree over this house a spirit of unity, a spirit of oneness. We got one vision and one goal. We serve one Lord, one master, and one king. And nothing that the Lord would have us to do will we be restrained from. Jesus is Lord.